And we know the yeah, government's yeah, always let's, building let's bunkers. Let's punctuate and- this with something that is happening. And you follow this for yourself on the national news. Insider trading. Now, let me try to explain it, if I may. On the stock market, uh, there's the average, ordinary, everyday John Doe that trades on the stock market. Then there is what is called insider trading. That means people who are the CEOs, the corporate heads of, uh, of corporations in America. Many of them are the elitists themselves, not all, but some. Insider trading means when these, these corporate heads, the, these CEOs, trade on the stock market, it's called insider trading. Whenever the average John Doe trades, it's just an average person trading. Here are the statistics. Please write these down. September the 13th through the 17th of this year, it was 400 to 1 of insider trading on the New York stock market. That means insiders, corporate heads, heads of CEOs, were selling their own corporate stocks. And it was 400 to 1, 400 being of the corporate sellers compared to one of the John Doe out here selling. Listen to this figure. October the 4th through the 8th. Now, we're, we're right here, right where we are almost today. The, the insider trading has gone to 1,600 to 1. Folks, are you getting this? Do you understand that the corporate heads, the CEOs, the corporation uh, managers, that these people are selling their own company stocks and bailing out in mass, and they have done it within one month's time from 400 to 1 to 1,601. What is it that these elitists, many of them, and these corporate heads, what is it that they know that you and I don't know while they're bailing out? Continue. Well, I was told by my elitist friend, and I recorded it on DVD, uh, that by 2012, the dollar will be dead. What is it that these people know? They know what's about to happen. They know that we're going to a world currency. They know that the dollar is on its way out. Russia knows it. China knows it. That's the reason they didn't sign their agreement for crude oil and natural gas using dollars. Instead, they said we're going to use another currency. They're looking to the future because they know what's going to happen. The elitists have it already already have stated to me that by 2012, the dollar will be dead. Folks, you'd better prepare. Anything that you're going to do with your dollars, you need to do them now because you may not have the opportunity. The dollar is crashing very rapidly. This, this is very obvious that something is in the wind that the elitists are doing. Now, they don't want to wait until the American people get so angry and upset that they start a revolution. They want to bring it about in such a manner that you will be so poor you won't be able to do anything. Let me read you the three statements that he gave to me just under two years ago. He said, within two years, you will not recognize America. I'm reading them verbatim. Again, and I recorded this on DVD. I'm so glad I did so nobody can ever doubt it. He said again, by 2012, the dollar will be dead. Again, in the same conversation. He said, within two years, nearly everyone will be working for the government. This is before the takeover of General Motors and Chrysler and AIG and and the bank problems that we had toward the end of the Bush administration and before health care. Do you realize that all of these things are coming to pass exactly as this individual told me they would happen? Amazing. Uh, Continuing, let's look at the Iran situation. What do you tell you on Iran? That's the big one. I am so glad you asked about this, Alex, because Iran right now is critical. You remember that two years ago, and again, I recorded this on my DVD series, and I said, everybody thought we wanted to war with Iran two years ago. We had all of our uh, our Air Force, our Navy, uh, Marines, everybody, uh, battle ready, right out there in the Persian Gulf. And nearly every talk show host, and I, as a talk show guest, was saying, we're about to go to war with Iran. And I was on the phone with this elitist friend of mine one day, and he said, And he no, said, no, happened. it's not going to happen for a couple years, but that was a couple years ago. Yeah, and then one year ago, nearly everybody was getting ready for it again, and he said the same thing. He said, Chaplin, it is not time for war with Iran yet. Well, I'm changing my tune altogether. It's now. It's It's time. They are within three, folks, please jot this down. You are within three to four months of, and I'm putting this just as, as 
as positively as I can in a manner that they would say it. The elite want a Middle East crisis within four to five months' time. It is now. I, before, I said you have nothing to worry about. I'm telling you now, you're within four or five months to the time that they want this. It is time. Well, I don't even know what to say to that because so much, almost everything that this individual has told you has been dead on. Uh, very few things have, have not been dead on. And, uh, you know, he said no war with Iran now. Now he's saying they are going to do it. He says they want a conflict in the Middle East. Now, this could be with Israel. This could be concerning the, the, the West Bank. This could be many different things. They want a conflict. But don't focus your attention on that. Folks, I go back to what I said at the beginning of the program today. Please don't allow these little conflicts. And yeah, but an attack small. on Iran, every major analyst talks about $200 a barrel, $400 a barrel. I mean, it runs the gamut of 200 and above. I mean, that would do your oil uh, the situation right there. But watch China and Russia. Don't get so involved in watching what takes place in the Middle East that you... No, no, I understand that they've made these oil deals and, and China shifting away from dollars and so is Russia. That's all mainstream news. My issue is, what else did he say was going to happen with China and Russia? Well, naturally, China is not going to be our best friend from this point on. They're cashing out. They, they don't want our T-bills anymore. They're not coming to the Federal Reserve auctions. And many of you will remember that I warned you about this a year and a half ago when this individual was on the phone with me. And he said whenever other countries stop buying our T-bills and our Federal Reserve auctions, that the dollar is going to collapse because there's nobody to back it up. Now the Federal Reserve is buying their own T-bills back again and monetizing the debt in a different manner. We are in everything this man told me in the past two years has happened to you like that. Now watch China, because China is not going to continue buying our currencies. Instead, they're going to gold and silver. Okay, you ready? Here's the next one. Gold and silver. Oh, my goodness, people, I warned you. I begged of you two years ago to buy gold and silver. Now, folks, I don't sell gold and silver. I don't represent any gold and silver dealer or company. You couldn't buy a piece of gold or silver for me if you call me on my phone personally and ask me to sell it to you. I am telling you what I have been told. Gold and silver, when I warned you two years ago, it was 600 to $650 an ounce. Today it's $1,350 an ounce, and it's still cheap. Where is gold and silver going? Here is the prediction. The currency of the elite is gold and silver. They are not going to allow anything to control it nor to disturb it. I warn you, years ago, gold and silver, and I've just been told, is going up, 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 up. Can I say it any plainer? You have seen nothing yet. The price of gold and silver is going so catastrophic about what it is today, you have never seen the like. It is the, I was told by this elitist that the only place that you could protect your assets is in gold and silver. And even at $1,350 an ounce, it still is cheap compared to what you're going to be paying for it a year from now. And that's what he told you. Yes, it's going to continue to go up and up and up. There is no end to this. It is the only thing. You can't depend on real estate anymore. There's no way in this world. This mortgage crisis, and we haven't even gotten on that subject yet. Yeah, let's cover let's cover the mortgage crisis when we come back. And any, any other key intel he gave you, uh, and uh, you know what the mortgage crisis is designed to do, and I concur with your analysis and what he told you. I completely agree, but, but, but we'll get that on the other side, then phone calls. Your call's coming up in the next hour with Pastor Lindsey Williams. For those who just joined us, his uh, top globalist source that he's known for 30-plus years is dying of cancer and just basically spilt his guts to him in the last uh, two weeks. We were getting into mortgages. Uh, let's break down what he told you uh, concerning uh, all the mortgage fraud and the big mortgage scandals that are going on right now. Uh, go ahead, uh, Lindsey Williams. It's by the providence of God that I know what I know. Let me stress to every person out there in the listening audience, I was invited to be the chaplain on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline and got to know these people back 35 years ago. They're now old. Most of them are retired. And they have been willing to tell me these things. I pass on to you only what I feel by the providence of God I've been given so that you can be properly warned and know the issues. 
You won't get information like this from the national media. You won't hear it any other place. I don't know of any other person on the face of the earth that one of these elitists talks to as he has been willing to talk to me over the past two years' time. One of the issues that has been so prominent lately is a mortgage crisis. And let me tell you what they, the elitists, have planned. They planned it way back in the 80s. They knew exactly what they were doing. This is not happening by chance. Every bit of this is by design. It is MBS. You'll be hearing this word more and more, mortgage-backed securities. They started these teaser loans, these interest-only, all the modern-day method of mortgaging. Now, that's both for residential and commercial real estate. They knew when they started issuing these loans that it was going to wind up exactly where it is today. And it is estimated that the mortgage-backed securities issue is is as high as $45 trillion. A professor in a university up in the Northeast gave this statistic this past week. It, it, it's mind-boggling. What they've done is they have taken your house mortgage, they've taken the residential and the commercial mortgages, and they've sliced them and they've diced them. And without having paperwork, they only had oftentimes computer entries to prove that they had the the rights to be able to do this, they have sold these things to everything from uh, from pension funds to mutual funds to banks to insurance companies to France to England. They've sold them all over the world, and they've used them for bartering and trading, and it's oftentimes what uh, what you hear uh, about uh, as the, the secret instrument, so to speak, that's going on today. Now, what is the end result of this going to be? Folks, this this is so. I mean, it, when I heard this, I, I literally was mind boggled. Uh, eventually, the government will have to stay, step in and bail this industry out. Uh, th- there is no way that, and they want it. This is what this the end goal of this is for this crisis to become so critical. Now you remember, only about two weeks ago, Bank of America, Chase, uh, a number of other lending institutions. Uh, said we're not going to any longer do make any foreclosures. We're not going to sell any foreclosed mortgages on houses. And then just the beginning of this week, they came back and changed altogether and said we're starting all over again. They are scared to death. The lending institutions have they, they have repossessed property. They've turned around and resold that property illegally. Now please listen to this. If you have bought a house within the past three years' time that was a repossession, you probably cannot get a clear title to it, and the banks know it. And you will lose, you, you, you ought to lose that property. I, I don't want to frighten you, but if you bought anything repossessed from one of the lending institutions in the past three years, you are due to lose it. Why? Because they don't have proper title. They don't have the warranty deeds. They did not get the paperwork from the counties. And these $45 trillion worth of debt is out there floating around. Lindsay, stay there. We're going to do five more minutes on this and then go directly to calls. But we're going to finish up with this key information straight ahead. We'll be right back.